Hello, this is Haku with the Bean, and I am here with SCP 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Starting with SCP 16, we have the sentient microorganism. Item number 16 Object class Keter. SCP-16 is to remain within the confines of a 5x5x5 five by five by five meter room at all times, maintained at a temperature not to exceed 0 degrees Celsius, also known as freezing. SCP-16 itself is to remain in the pit at dish in the containment cube at all times unless directed otherwise by level, five, by level 4 or O5 personnel. Full documentation of experimentation with, with SCP-16 must be submitted before and after samples and duplicates of SCP-16 may be taken. But earlier to follow these procedures will result in termination or reassignment as Class C personnel. Only authorized personnel may be permitted to obtain samples at, of an experiment with SCP-16 under BCL-5 containment conditions. Before we continue, I just remembered. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoy it, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content and like this and the other things I do. And please leave a comment. I'm looking for questions and it's right now for something I want to do later on. But if you don't have any questions for me, just leave a comment anyway. It helps out the channel. Continuing on. If an outbreak does occur despite the following aforementioned procedures, directive based personnel are to implement a code sigma a lockdown and containment plan. Infected personnel are to be terminated on site by security forces for a standard mission oriented and protective posture, anti biological and anti chemical equipment. Should the infection not be contained after 48 hours, the on-site nuclear device is to be detonated. The remaining personnel are to be evacuated under are not to be evacuated under any circumstances. SCP-16 has been shown to survive up to six hours on hard surfaces and up to several minutes in air. High intense ultraviolet light and high concentrations of ortho oh, the Allodide solution have been demonstrated to be effective in disinfecting non organic surfaces. <sighs> Description SCP 16 is a bloodborne pathogen recovered from a mine worker in unknown date who injured himself while working in a deep coal seam. Said of Gwen became contaminated with coal dust from the mine possibly infecting the worker with the dormant spores. Over the next several days, SCP-16 proceeded to infect the remaining employees of the mining camp, as well as the CDC crisis team dispatched to deal with the, the epidemic. As Foundation personnel then took over the investigation and terminated all affected personnel. Patient Zero was brought into captivity and the mine shaft was collapsed by an explosive device. SCP-16 has an incubation period ranging from 24 hours to 2 years, depending on the presence and the number of other human hosts in the area. First symptoms resemble the common cold and include itchy eyes, runny nose, coughing, and bodily aches. Phase 2 begins in 48 hours and consists of a controlled form of hemorrhagic fever as the organism causes a small amount of blood to become aspirated in the your lungs, creating an aerosol effect. During phase 3, the host crashes and bleeds out, bleeding profusely from every bodily orifice, including the nose, tear ducts, anus, skin pores, mouth, and in case of uh, AFAB people, vagina. Blood pressure skyrockets during the final stage. Hosts have been observed projectile vomiting to distances of over 5 meters. Should the host survive this near total extinction and the pathogen and will become more dormant once more, returning to incubation phase. 
What distinguishes SCP-16 from other strains of hemorrhagic fever such as Ebola and Marburg is its unusual response to high stress. Should these subjects undergo a high stress situation such as a life-threatening crisis, the organism will change its survival tactic from rapid reproduction to the rewriting of the host DNA and simulation of rapid cell division. Major psychological notes. Physiological changes occur within 24 hours, with complete bodily reconstruction occurring within two weeks' time. Most hosts do not survive the process due to the heavy demands made of the body. Here are some irregularities uh, as fatal contagious that simulate the production of excess organs. A possible link to SCP 1801 is under our investigation. We do not know what SCP-1801 is right now, so we will continue. An interesting side effect of the transformation is an increased aggressive urge. It is believed that this may be an attempt to maximize the spread of the virus in a manner or similar to rabies. On another note, subjects who undergo bodily transformation no longer exhibit SCP-16's hemorrhagic properties. However, so those include infected by transformed hosts will undergo the normal SCP-16 infection process. And then them. Experiment log of SCP-16 transformative properties. Subject D-061. D-class personnel infected by ISCP-16. Upon first showing symptoms, the subject's cores were slowly flooded with water over a 24-hour period. Subject SCP-16 mutated into a teratomorphic state, transforming subject's lungs into gills. Subject survived for two more weeks as SCP-16 transformed its limbs into fins, caused its eyes to atrophy, and enhanced its sense of hearing into a set and type echolocation ability. Subject was terminated by draining all water from its quarters, causing it to asphyxiate. Body was uh, subsequently cremated without autopsy. Subject D-16-2. D-class personnel infected by SCP-16. Upon first showing symptoms, subject's cores were slowly fed with water over a 24-hour period. SCP-16 in Utah into A teratomorphic state causes them to undergo a rapid muscle growth and increased bone growth on knuckles. So, then, in an attempt to escape the gunfire by punching through the reinforced steel door. Subject was not successful and died by drowning. Note same situation, two different responses. Interesting. Doctor Unknown. Subject D-16-3 D-class personnel infected by SCP-16 Subject was previously a chemical engineer who poisoned his wife upon discovering her adultery. Oh, so this one was actually a, a, a criminal. It's theory that some D-class personnel are not actually criminals, but they are made to be cr criminals so that they could uh, take them into SCP custody. Makes sense for a shadowy gov organization that uh, that takes control of governments when needed to. Anyway. Upon first showing symptoms, subject's quarters were slowly flooded with water over a 24-hour period. SCP-16 mutated into a teratomorphic state, causing subject to grow an unusual organ on its chest, consisting of a chamber and two separate tubes. Organs continue to take in and water and swell in size, until Foundation personnel realizing what at SCP-16, it may be attempting, terminated, and the subject by gunshot. Organ was found to contain several gas sacks filled with, with acetylene gas and oxygen. I don't know the significance. I'm guessing it might be um, an explosion sort of thing. Anyway.
Subject D sixteen four. D class personnel O infected by SCP sixteen. Subject was told to concentrate on forming wings. No stress was applied. SCP sixteen did not mutate it into the teratomorphic state. Subject died of exen Ingrination during phase three. SCP D sixteen five D class as for snow infected by SCP sixteen. Subject was told to concentrate on forming wings and place in an acrylic box suspended three hundred five meters one thousand feet above a mine shaft. A timer was placed outside the box, which subject was told to indicate time to release. Subject sixteen mutated into a terrific state. It causes them to grow a tentacle like organ on its left wrist, similar to a spider spider So it extends the organ through one of the boxes, holds in extruded a strong silt like substance, which it then secured, used to secure the box to the cable. Subject was terminated when the countdown reached zero and the bomb detonated. So it's a very interesting and usually deadly disease. Unless you're put into a situation not caused by a disease, but just in general, that required your body to literally change its entire or physiology or even just parts of it. That's interesting. SCP-17 Shadow Person Object Class Keter SCP-17 is contained in, in an acrylic glass cage 100 cm by, by 50 cm by 50 cm Sentry suspended in a concrete room measuring 6 m by 6 m by 4 m Attached to the walls Ceiling and floor of the room are high intensity arc lamp spotlights point directly at the acrylic cage to ensure that SCP 617 is constantly exposed to light from every angle. Personnel assigned to SCP 17 control room are to monitor the functionality of these spotlights and the emergency generator system and confirm its immediately upon knowledge of a burnt out lamp or an issue with the generator. The only circumstance under which personnel are allowed interest, entrance is to re replace lamps. Personnel entering the room are required to wear the designated full-body reflective suits and must be cautioned not to step in front of functional spotlights. Description SCP-17 is a humanoid figure approximately 80 centimeters in height, anatomically similar to a small child with no discernible f identifying features. SCP-17 seems to be Composed entirely of a shadow, a smoke like shroud. No attempt to find any object beneath the shroud has been successful, but the, the possibility has not been ruled out. SCP 17's reaction to shadows cast uh, as upon it is immediate and swift. SCP 17 leaps at the object of casting the shadow and immediately encloses it in its shroud. Whereupon it returns to its normal size, leaving no trace of the object behind. Additional notes. Personnel with beta clearance or higher should also see document 17-1.
Maybe this will do it. Oh. Nope. Okay, I can't find that document, so I guess we're going to have to give up for now. Let's go to SCP-18, known as the Super Ball. SCP-18, after class Euclid, special containment procedures. SCP-18 is contained in its specialty metal restraint inside of a 1, one meter by 1 meter by 1 meter sealed box lined with heavy synthetic padding. The sealed box is then submerged in the, the center of the... 10 meter by 10 meter by 10 meter uh, or poly at the line holding tank. If SCP 18 is break free from the holding box, the poly at the base will slow down connect activity enough for proper retrieval by, the, by containment personnel. Personnel entering SCP 18's holding chamber are to wear specialized plating found inside of SCP 18 observation and a breathing apparatus before being lowered into the a polyethylene tank. If SCP-18 is loose outside of the polyethylene uh, I cannot say that word. Tank. Personnel are, are advised to secure themselves in a separate room and close the to hatches to isolate SCP-18 until containment teams arrive. <sighs> Description SCP-18 has the appearance of a super ball made by the Whammo Company in 1969. It is 6 centimeters in diameter and colored red. Found when the Link Company was hired to clean it out a warehouse that had Whammo merchandise in it. SCP-18 was known to be able to bounce with extreme height. At first, thought to be a pleasant child's toy, SCP-18 was able to bounce with over 200% in efficiency. That is, if dropped 1 meter, it would bounce 2, then 4, then 8, then 16. The ball soon became a dangerous projectile, reaching speeds estimated at uh, over 100 kilometers per hour, and damaging property and entering 5 in the city of blank. It came to be who rest after several days in the nearby lake of Blank, and was retrieved by SCP personnel. Due to the speed of the object and the total surprise by its victims, no cover or uh, sorry was required or initiated. Hmm. Document 1804. Message to O5 Unknown. Blank. I hope everything is well. The reason I write to you is because I have found a more effective method for retrieving new or escaped SCP objects. Yes, I realize we haven't had any progress in reverse engineering in whatever allows this thing to fight at the laws of thermodynamics, but we have come up with a very effective method for integrating one of those new SCP A5 armor suits with this. Just hear me out. We implanted it into the bottom of a boot. Pick up a little bit of a mechanical device, and ta-da, this boot is now capable of jumping well over a building. Also, oh, if the wearer has their foot against something and they want dead, well, let's just say it delivers a hell of a kick. All I need is permission to modify one of the pre-existing SCP-A5 suits, and you'll be able to actually capture a blank, plus any other escaped SCP objects. Trust me. When have I ever let you down in the past? Doctor Unknown. Document 1806. Letter to Doctor Unknown. Doctor Unknown. Upon assignment, Agent Blank was issued 
your modified SCP-85 armor and retrieving SCP blank, and the results are mixed. Agent blank was able to place the blank collar onto SCP a, a blank chases through oh, the Amazon and strain it by dismemberment. However, due to a malfunction of your little mechanical device, he was launched almost a mile into the air and suffered two broken and legs, seven broken ribs, a missing arm, and a skull fracture upon hitting the water of the lake of Lake Blank. And on the way back down, you will fix that. You will fix that before I authorize you or armor for common use. Document 1811. Blink, don't worry, it's fixed, but I have some more ideas. If I can be granted the use of some um, water from SCP-6. SCP-blank and possibly SCP-blank. I can deliver you a set of SCP-85 armor and an agent that can capture any, if not all, rogue or unattained SCPs. All I'm waiting in is on, on its ear of approval. It looks like a really dangerous ball, but it looks like like this one the doctor wanted to use it in a very creative and interesting way. Armor to 19. The monster pot. This is a pretty well known on one. Enough to be in in one of the um mods. I don't, I don't know what it actually does, and, and I've never really read this. I guess we'll find out. Item class. Now, item number. SCP-19. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. SCP-19 is to be kept on a wide grate in a 3x3x4 three by three by meter in reinforced or concrete room. Installed with an incinerator. Room is to be kept at 0 degrees Celsius when the incinerator is not activated. An observation chamber separated by a plate glass window is to be used for constant observation of SCP-19, and if or when specimens of SCP-192 are observed, the incinerator is to be activated. In the event of, of an outbreak of SCP-192 ordinary, firearms are successful in terminating in individual specimens, although in the case of SCP of swarm level outbreaks, flamethrowers may be more effective. SCP-19 should be kept in a vertical position at all times. <sighs> Description SCP-19 appears to be a very large ceramic vase. 1.8 meters in diameter, or at the mouth, and 2.4 meters high. Style and decoration indicate it was created in classical Greece, although conclusive dating is impossible as the surface is entirely unbreakable by any known means. If a successful method is discovered, SCP-19 is to be destroyed with prejudice. Periodically, entities emerge from SCP-19. Collectively, these are known as SCP-192. The entities vary in many aspects, but tend to be small, vaguely humanoid, though they may have animal alloyed features and extremely hostile. They often choose to attack with teeth or claws, although fairly delicate, also extreme, surprisingly flammable. They are reasonably strong and pose a considerable a considerable threat in large numbers. When kept at 0 degrees Celsius and totally at rest, entities will emerge from SCP-19 at a rate of approximately one entity per hour. The following traits are known to affect SCP-192's manifestation and rate. Movement of SCP-19, threat to SCP-19, 
extreme temperature highs and lows, sudden shift in surrounding environment, introduction of organisms to the inside of SCP-19, known to cause a flood reaction, traits that may not influence SCP-19 into its manifestation rate, presence of human life near SCP-19, current weather patterns, Specific individuals near SV-19. Some individuals appear to affect SV-19-2's emergence rate more drastically than others. In addition, tipping or tilting SV-19 will create a reaction as it was previously filled with SV-19-2 specimens. Although viewers looking into SV-19 in from above will merely observe a dark hole. Due to the production rate of SCP-192 when the object is disturbed, measurement of the internal cavity is difficult, but it is, but it is suspected to be inconsistent with the outside measurements. Addendum Document SCP-192-OA SCP-192 notes as manifest by Dr. Light and Dr. Val. Unknown date SV-192 specimen was removed from containment chamber and kept in reinforced pin, provided with water and live chickens as food. The specimen made quiet, continuous garbled vocalizations, and is determined to be phonetically similar to ancient Hellenic languages. Although the reason for this is unknown, specimens are still thought to be no more intelligent than animals. The specimen lived for less than 48 hours, and a dissection revealed an enemy consistent on a cellular on a cellular level with normal biology, but with an extremely unstable musculoskeletal structure. Other notable anomalies is included an unstable respira respiratory system, a non-existent digestive tract, and virtually no other internal organs. All other cadaver specimens have followed similar patterns of behavior and demise. Now, it appears that SCP-192 specimens were not intended to live for meaningful amounts of time, I'm outside of SCP-19, Dr. Vo. Unknown date. Containment user was slightly damaged following prolonged exposure to SCP-192 specimen. Missed by the marketing team because of partial transparency. This has not been known in SCP-192 before. Marketing teams will continue to report further anomalies. Unknown date. Marketing teams report some specimens of of SCP-192 now appearing to be significantly more resistant to incineration than others. It is high hypothesized that this is a defense mechanism on the part of SCP-19. Unknown date. Most specimens of, uh, of SCP-192 are now all but entirely resistant to the effects of the incinerator. Replacement of incinerator with an acid bath is being considered. Evolution of SCP-192 is being studied and may, may be evidence of sentience in SCP-19. Now we go to the last one. SCP-20 Unseen Mold <sighs> Oh jeez. Item number SCP-820, Object Class Keter. Samples of SCP-20 are stored in a series of sealed old cultivation chambers inside a sealed old containment room at Biological or Research Area 12, which is accessible only via airlocks. Nutrients are measured via automated robotic systems as the cultivation chamber must remain sealed at all times. Hermetically sealed vape Video surveillance cameras are installed within the containment room and must be checked daily for integrity. Any person now entering the containment room must wear a biosafety level 5 equipment, including ingrid breathers and other grow a full anti fungal on disinfection of hot next day. Description SCP 20 is a fast spreading fungal organism that is made of, that is capable of affecting the senses and behavior of living creatures, including humans. Samples of SCP-20 exhibit an unknown effect 
the rays are effectively invisible to direct observation. When under a microscope, SP20 is only visible to humans when viewed through photographic or surveillance or video surveillance. Upon SCP, once SCP-20 forms a colony, usually within a human residence, it will produce spores that affect the behavior of humans around it. Affected spores will increase the heat and humidity within their homes to create an environment more stable to the growth of SCP-20. Affected subjects will also be, become more sociable in many cases, and in often and often invite acquaintances to their homes to spread to first spread the organism. As the spores and mold on these are invisible to affected subjects, the mold may sometimes grow directly on living subjects. <sighs> As the spores and colonies within the home approach critical levels, the health of affected human subjects will rapidly deteriorate resulting in death. Further spread of the mold may occur as the bodies of any deceased subjects are encountered by emergency responders and healthcare agents, as well as transportation of the bodies to local morgues. SCP-820 was first encountered in Redacted, where an undercover SCP agent noted dramatic personality changes in personnel working at the local hospital. Upon investigation by a containment team, it was discovered that almost blank civilians had been infected. As well as the majority of the town, the civilian and population was terminated, and the town is arid and under cover of a flash forest fire. To date, over 12 outbreaks of SCP 20 have been reported. Investigations are currently underway to determine the source of these outbreaks and prevent po and possible preventive measures. Hang on. Just had to fix something. Anyway, addendum 2001. Except from the audio slash, except from the audio slash video mission and recorders of Mobile Task Force ETA 10. I mean, ETA 10. See no evil. Or the initial containment of SCP-20 on redacted. T2 is lean. Team 2. Ocom. Okay. Team 2, moving to the Red House. Copy UAV. One is picking up, up, up one heat signature. Team 2 in place. Ready to... Expl expl expletive. At this point, a civilian and woman appeared in the doorway, uh, holding a kitchen knife. Video surveillance shows that nearly two thirds of her face was covered by mold growths. Well, hello there, gentlemen. Can I take a breather inside? On the ground, drop the weapon! Don't be silly. Come on in and stay a while. Stop where you are! Drop the weapon! We. We just want to have some guests. Please, come in. Drop the expletive weapon! I assume that at this point, the infected civilization carry knows as as T24 carrying a primed incendiary weapon and lunged for that team members with a knife. Civil alien woman, that I expunged. Team 2 will lead. Open fire! Open fire! Gunfire and screaming. SCP-20 looks to be a mold that can grow in your house without you ever seeing it unless you regularly take pictures around your house and on, and on your own body. So just remember, maybe about once a week, you should probably go around your house taking pictures of every room, ceilings, walls, and floor. 
and uh, take a picture of yourself in the mirror every day. Or don't, because this is all fiction, and you should already know that. This has been SCP-1617, 18, 19, and 20. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Please leave your questions in the comments for me to read it below. See you next time!